Welcome to the presentation on financial reporting standards. Let's first understand the objective of financial statements and the importance of reporting standards. Information should be as useful as possible for many different types of users. It should be comparable across different companies. So different kinds of users might be people like you who are potential investors or analysts or uh, say the tax authorities, regulators, etc. So the whole idea being that anybody who wants to understand what is going on at a company should be able to look at the financial statements such as the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement and make uh, decisions or do a basic analysis and develop an understanding of the company. Financial statements should also allow us to compare across different companies. Companies, From an analyst perspective, if you are considering an investment in Ford versus Toyota, ideally you should be able to look at the financial statements of both companies and among other things, the financial statements should allow you to make comparisons. And just to build on this, financial statements should also allow you to compare what's happening at a given company year on year. Standard setting bodies. As far as we are concerned, there are two major standard setting bodies in the world. One is the United States Financial Accounting Standards Board, often referred to as FASB. So this is the name of the organization. The standard that they create is called the US GAAP or US Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. As you can, as you can see from the name, American companies, US companies use uh, create statements that follow the US cap. The other major body is the International Accounting Standards Board or IASB <coughs> and the standard that they create is called International Financial Reporting Standards or IR, um, IFRS. Sometimes you might also see uh, things like IAS and then this stands for International Accounting Standards and there are many different standards depending on what we are talking about. So there might be IAS 18, IAS and then followed by some number which is a reference to a particular accounting standard. At our simplistic level both IFRS and IAS refers to uh, refers to standards whereas IASB refers to the board or the standard setting body. We also have regulatory bodies. These are entities that regulate. So they so the way you can think of it say in Pakistan companies are supposed to create accounting statements based on IFRS. So IFRS is simply the standard that needs to be followed. Then which entity ensures that companies are indeed following standards and basically not breaking rules that so those authorities are the regulatory authorities. In Pakistan, we have the SECP Securities and Exchange Commission of Pakistan. So this is a regulatory authority. In the US, we have the SEC Securities and Exchange Commission. In the UK, we have Financial Services Authority and so on. So these are the regulatory authorities. We need to understand the stated goals of IASB, the International Accounting Standards Board. So the stated goals are to develop accounting standards requiring transparency, comparability and high quality. What transparency means is that by looking at the financial statements, you need to be able to tell what is happening at the company. So the information should be economically significant. So transparency essentially means that 
whatever information is presented or whatever is happening within a company from a financial perspective is transparently presented in the financial statements. Comparability means that the information provided should be such that different companies can be easily compared. Plus, within a given company you should be able to compare financial results for this year versus last year versus the year before and obviously we want financial reports that are of high quality the international accounting standard board also wants to promote a global standard and for the most part they've been successful almost all countries in the world except for the united states are on uh, are using the uh, IASB's standard which is IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards. So used in Pakistan, used in most European countries, used in Canada and so on. Account for the need of emerging markets and small firms. So IFRS also accounts for the needs of emerging markets where uh, there might not be bodies within countries like say Uzbekistan that uh, can produce accounting standards. So small companies in emerging markets can simply follow IFRS. Convergence. Convergence refers to the convergence between IFRS and US GAAP. So both these entities are working towards a system so that so that IFRS and US GAAP so that the differences between these two standards are minimized. So this is an ongoing activity. International Organization of Securities Commissions or IOSCO this is an organization that basically is an so this is an organization of all the or most of the major regulatory authorities in the world so organizations like the SEC in the US FSA in the UK and so on and several other regulatory authorities in the world so their association together is referred to as the IOSCO so this organization is like an umbrella organization or a support organization for the regulatory authorities around the world, allows these entities to share best practices and learn from each other. So the objective of this entity is to help ensure that we protect investors, ensure fairness, efficiency, transparency and reduce overall systematic risk in the capital markets. We'll talk about systematic risk in a lot more detail later. So earlier I talked about the fact that US GAAP and IFRS are trying to converge to an uh, environment where accounting rules are very similar. But what are the potential barriers here? Simplistically put, there are two very straightforward barriers. One has to do with disagreements between standard setting bodies. So this is the FAS B and uh, the International Financial Reporting Standards. Uh, so disagreements between the standard setting bodies. So the first is disagreement between standard setting bodies, which is FAS B and International Accounting Standards Board. And the other is disagreement between different regulatory authorities around the world, such as SEC in the US and regulatory authorities in other parts of the world. There is a lot more to this, but from an exam perspective, um, this is what you need to know. This now is a very important slide and it refers to the IASB framework. And I would strongly encourage you to learn Exhibit 2 in the curriculum very well. This is on page 106 of the 2011 curriculum. What you need to understand is the four qualitative characteristics. So memorize these very well and need to know a couple of lines on each. 
so one way to memorize this is just to say UCRR understandability comparability relevance and reliability again I strongly encourage you to read this from the curriculum understandably understandability means that the financial reports should be understandable by somebody with a basic knowledge of economics basic knowledge of accounting so you don't need to be a PhD in finance or accounting to be able to understand financial reports they should be on so people with a basic business knowledge should be able to understand financial reports as long as they study them diligently comparability means that financial reports should be comparable across companies and for the same company over time so you should be able to do cross-sectional analysis as well as time series analysis relevance clearly the d information in the financial reports should be relevant and one important aspect of being relevant is that the information should be timely if you get a financial report for activities that happened three years ago then obviously the relevance is low relevance also means that all important economic aspects of a company are adequately reflected in the financial statements reliability essentially means that the financial reports are free from any material error and bias so absolutely the financial reports need to be neutral and clearly they should not be material errors material refers to any information or any information that would have a financial impact or an impact on the sorts of decisions that you would make you also need to memorize constraints and assumptions related with the IASB framework the two top bullets here are the constraints what this means is you know reliability versus timeliness this is a trade-off in the sense that if you spend a lot of time creating financial reports you will create something that's more reliable but that will impact the timeliness of reports so if it takes you two years to create a very reliable financial statement data will be two years or information will be two years old which means you compromise timeliness on the other hand if you try to create reports very fast then there might be a potential negative impact on reliability so we need to understand this trade-off and try to create a healthy balance between the two benefit versus cost is another obvious um, another obvious trade-off where if your cost to produce a report is very high there will be a lot of um, you know the report will be really good and really beneficial to those who study it but if you spend 10 million dollars creating the financial creating the financial statements clearly that cost is too high so here again there should be a balance between how much money is spent on creating the reports versus the benefit of those reports to the consumers of those reports the second two bullet points here are assumptions one important assumption is accrual basis which we will uh, talk about in more detail later but the accrual basis of accounting basically means that we recognize revenue when so so we recognize revenue based on when revenue has been earned and recognize expenses when the expense is actually incurred the going concern assumption basically refers to the fact that we assume that any company for which we are creating financial statements will continue to operate as a business for the foreseeable future now let's talk about exhibit 3 IASB general requirements for financial statements here again I'd strongly encourage you to uh, to study exhibit 3 in a lot of detail there are three broad components to exhibit 3 the first one is required financial statements so under ISP the balance sheet the income statement the cash flow statement the statement of changes in equity and accounting policies and notes are all absolutely required 
then number two is fundamental principles so in creating financial reports or financial statements these fundamental principles need to be kept into account one is fair presentation so information that is presented in these uh, in these statements needs to be as the term implies presented fairly so they should be neutral no bias and no errors and so on as indicated earlier we need to make a going concern so need to be presented on a going concern basis which means we assume that the business will go on for the foreseeable future a cruel basis as we just discussed means that uh, recognize revenue when revenue is earned and recognize expenses when expenses are incurred consistency means that if we look at financial reports from period to period there needs to be consistency in the way we present data so for example if in a given year we are presenting inventory using the lifo method then we need to be consistent we can't keep switching between lifo and fifo depending on what suits us so need to be consistent in the way we present information so for materiality i will quote the curriculum which says omissions or misstatements of items are material if they could individually or collectively influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of the financial statements any material item shall be presented separately so essentially any information that impacts economic decisions is considered material and hence should be properly presented in the financial statements and finally presentation requirements so information we need to have aggregation which means that each material class of similar items is must be presented separately so dissimilar items are presented separately unless they are immaterial so the point here is that all accounts receivable is presented together property plant and equipment would be presented together and so on no offsetting means that you can't just offset assets and liabilities unless it is explicitly allowed so for example you can't say that accounts receivable is 100 accounts payable is also 100 so you just offset these against each other not allowed uh, again in terms of presentation classified balance sheet means that we distinguish between current and non current assets minimum information this refers to certain minimum information that must be presented in the financial statements and here again i would strongly encourage you to study exhibits 4 and 5 in the curriculum and these are on pages 114 and 115 and finally comparative information the information presented in financial statements should be such should be such that you can compare across time periods and across uh, companies but obviously for a given company perspective comparing across different time periods for the same company is what is critical now let's talk about fas b versus um, versus the ifrs uh, frameworks the point that has been made earlier that we are moving towards Uh, convergence of uh, fasb and ifrs but let us also at this stage study exhibit 6 which talks about the differences the current differences between the two frameworks between the fasb framework and the ifrs framework notice that we are not talking right now about differences in specific accounting rules which we will see later in the in this course right now we are simply talking about the differences in the framework and for this i would uh, encourage you to study exhibit 6 so the first point here relates to the purpose of the framework according to iasb 
if no if, if for example you are dealing with a situation where no standard exists uh, so just as an example uh, I don't know this for a fact but let's say that you know a building is destroyed by a terrorist attack so let's say that your financial repo uh, your, your rules do not have any explicit guidance on how to deal with such a situation according to IASB so this would be the international financial reporting standards we need to consider the overall framework when we decide what to do with that specific situation FASB however does not require this so essentially FASB lets you do whatever you want if you come across a situation where uh, rules are not defined when it comes to objectives FASB distinguishes between a business entity and a non-business entity such as a NGO or a non-government organization. So IFRS on the other hand does not distinguish between business and non-business. In terms of underlying assumptions, both US GAAP and FASB recognize the importance of the accrual basis as well as the going concern assumptions. However, in the FASB framework, these assumptions are not very well uh, not very well defined. With IFRS, however, these assumptions are taken very, very seriously. As far as the qualitative characteristics are concerned, we talked about these earlier and you need to memorize these. Understandability, comparability, reliability and relevance. So both IFRS and US GAAP have the same four qualitative characteristics, but the relative importance of the two is different between FASB and IFRS. So relevance and reliability are considered primary qualities whereas comparability is deemed to be a secondary quali quality under FASB. Uh, this is not the case with IFRS where the order of importance is different and I, again I would just remind you that the best way to study this is is, um, is the is exhibit 6 in the curriculum. This is probably as a side note one of the hardest things to do because you need to go through this reading in a lot of detail and memorize a lot of important points. What I have tried to do in these slides is at least identify the most important points and identify the most important exhibits. So at the very least you memorize this information and be ready for it on the exam. As far as constraints are concerned there isn't really any difference between FASB and IFRS and then financial statement elements so both have the core financial statement elements of assets liabilities owners equity revenue and expenses but then there are other subtleties that are slightly different between between the two standards or the two frameworks and here again on exhibit 6 page 118 I would encourage you to read the half page on this. So now we are on section 7 of the curriculum which talks about the characteristics of a uh, effective framework and barriers to a single coherent framework. Now we have been talking about two major frameworks the IFRS and the US GAAP. The, the point here is that if theoretically they were one single wonderful framework, what would be the core characteristics of that framework? And the answer is three major characteristics that we've already to some extent alluded to earlier are transparency, comprehensiveness and consistency. So transparency means that whatever the economic reality, so let me just spell this right, so economic reality of a company might be, that should be reflected in the financial statements. 
comprehensive means that all relevant business actions transactions activities of a given company should be reflected in the financial statements and consistency means that as we present financial statements every year information should be presented in a consistent manner uh, underlying assumptions need to be consistent and so on this makes it easy to compare data or financial statements from year to year now what are the barriers to a single coherent framework one barrier is valuation so you will see this in other parts of the course but when you value assets and liabilities there are different ways of doing this you can value based on historical cost you can value based on current fair value market value etc so we'll understand these terms in other lectures but very simplistically historical cost says that you value an asset based on how much you originally purchased it for fair value and market value say that you value based on current fair value or current market value so different frameworks might disagree on the appropriate valuation method for different kinds of assets and liabilities so that's one possible barrier another barrier refers to your measurement basis which could be either asset liability versus expense revenue so here again you will understand this better later on in the fra course but just to explain this in simple terms you can make different accounting assumptions so for example when you study inventory you will learn that there is a method called lifo and there is a method called fifo for valuing inventory now some methods or some assumptions allow us to have better numbers or more reliable numbers for assets and liabilities so based on certain numbers we have more up to date or more economically realistic information presented in the balance sheet whereas there are certain assumptions that give us better information in the income statement so there is often a conflict between these two where one set of assumptions will give us a better balance sheet at the expense of the income statement whereas other assumptions might give us a better income statement with uh, better income statement uh, at the expense of a uh, uh, you know not so good balance sheet so the specific examples we will look at later but clearly there might be disagreements between different uh, different bodies on what's more important to present a good balance sheet or to present a good information statement and finally standard setting would result in uh, another barrier and let's talk about this in the next slide so in terms of the standard setting approach standards can be established based on principles or based on specific rules or a combination of principles and rules and this often is referred to as objectives oriented now ifrs is generally considered to be principles based whereas fas b is considered to be very rules based so you can read this in detail in the curriculum but i feel that from a exam perspective knowing the information on this slide will uh, most probably serve you well enough now finally when you are analyzing financial reports you need to be aware of how financial reporting standards are evol are uh, evolving you need to know how companies are using the standards and you also need to know that how these standards impact your analysis so how the use of the different standards is impacting your analysis so that is it i would uh, if you are taking the exam in the next few months i would strongly encourage you to go through the relevant exhibits and study the material in a lot of detail because um, you need to or at least if you don't study it in detail at least learn all the important points related to uh, the objectives and constraints and so on so 
everything in these slides I feel is the most important stuff so know all the terminology in these slides and also know one or two line definitions related to all the terminology that you've seen here and then if you have time you can do the entire reading but uh, what you must make time for is practice so before moving on practice all the questions you can find related to this reading that is it for now